Hey there, this is Bob, and uh, I'm going to be installing some Vintner tuning pegs on this uh, flamenco guitar. It's a Ramirez 1A, and I think it's, uh, I should know, I haven't worked on it for a little bit. It's a 1970s, 1976. Is that it? No, I take it back. That's a different guitar. Anyway, uh, it's a 1970s. I, I just don't remember what year. It's a 1A. Uh, I have fixed uh, three big cracks in the sound box, one on the top, two in the back. I re-French polished the back. I re-French polished the top. I lightly sanded the neck because there were a few little, you know, rough areas, and I French polished that. I let it dry for over a week, and I shined it up this morning. I also re-glued the bridge. Not entirely, but it was partially off. Not off, but coming loose. Just a little bit. Not as bad as the last one I did. And I re-glued that with epoxy and um, cleaned up the fingerboard, checked all the frets, uh, leveled the ones that were high, re-crowned them. And uh, yeah, fixed all the cracks uh, with cleats, filled the outside parts of the cracks with uh, fine super glue, wet sanded, French polished, the whole thing, it's all done. So the last step is to install these Vintner tuning pegs. And I had a, I, I was given two different kinds of pegs. I was given Pegheads brand, and I was given Vintner. And uh, I actually wanted to put the Peghead brand in first because the holes are a little bit narrower. And that way he, the customer could try the uh, Pegheads first and if you like them, just stay with them. If not, he could give me the guitar back. I could make the holes slightly bigger. And I, they have to be reamed. It's, I think it's a one to 30 reamer. I'm not, yeah, one to 30 taper. And that's what this large reamer is. I also have a small reamer and I'm gonna be using both of them. Uh, so anyway, these are, uh, these are fatter than the Pegheads brand the Vintner, and they're also shorter, they're stubbier. And I don't think they look as authentic as the Peghead, Pegheads brand. But um, these have a uh, eight to one ratio, actually an 8.5 to one ratio, whereas the Pegheads had a four to one ratio. So in other words, you make four turns, on the peg at the at the knob and the top turns one complete revolution. On these, you have to turn eight turns, eight and a half turns for the top to turn one revolution. And apparently the uh, the customer uh, had been talking to uh, two or three or four or many uh, very well-known flamenco players, modern day players, and they highly recommended the Vintner. So, end of story, that's what we're putting in. So I've already reamed three holes, and I thought, the thought came to me, hey, why not videotape this? So that's what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, I have built this little jig here, and I built another one just like it, only a little bit higher, okay? But it turns out that I really don't need the higher one. I only need the smaller one. And basically the holes in these things, this thing, there's two holes, and I can choose either one and center it over the hole that I'm reaming. And I center it with a flashlight, okay? And I look in the hole and make sure I've got this one half inch hole centered over the smaller it's about five sixteenths of an inch hole. I center it perfectly. I clamp it in place with one little clamp. 
Now, when I'm reaming, this thing just keeps me from getting off of 90 degrees. I want to be perfectly perpendicular going in. If I'm not, the pegs will be crooked one way or the other, and it'll look like hell. They won't all be nice and straight, and they won't all be at a perfect 90 degree angle. So anyway, this larger block that I made, um, I don't really need it. Um, and actually, it's just a, maybe a little bit too tall. It's fine for the larger reamer, but for the smaller reamer, which I'm going to use, and I'll explain that. So I'm going to put that one aside. Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, before I started, the base peg holes were um, wider than the treble peg holes. And somebody messed around with this head before I got it. And the original friction pegs on the base side went through all the way with about a half inch sticking out. Where the treble holes, uh, you put the original friction pegs in and they only stuck out five sixteenths of an inch. So it looked very odd. Now, why somebody did that, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe to allow for more wind up on the base side because they take more room. That could be, but it looked really odd. So what, I, I'm, what I'm starting with are three base holes that are larger than the three treble holes, okay? So I've already reamed three of these, uh, not all the way, but quite close to the final um, dimension. Right now I'm reaming them all to that initial dimension that I'm after. And what that dimension is, is when I stick the peg through the head, I just, at this point, I just want the tip of the peg to just barely touch my finger coming through, okay? Just barely come through. And that assures me that um, the peg, in fact, is in the hole. It goes all the way through to right about here, if you can see down here, okay? This is just the first ream, getting them all about the same. And then the final ream, um, it's, uh, it doesn't require much more to get to the final position. Now these things don't screw in to the head. These pegs fic friction fit. So it really depends on how hard you push them into the head, uh, how far they'll go. And what I'm trying to do is get them eventually, so that this part that turns is beyond the, the face veneer on the top of the head. So in other words, that's how much will stick out. This is where the, uh, the shaft that doesn't move, this is, uh, at this point, I want uh, this to stop and this to move on through. So anyway, we'll, I'll show you as I go on here. This is going to be probably a two-parter, maybe three-parter. And this first part's going to be the longest. All right, so anyway, uh, first thing I've got to do, since I'm on the treble side, I'm, I'm going in this hole right here. Since I'm on the treble side, the first thing I need to do is widen this hole big enough for the large reamer to go in. If you look here, it's hard to see from the camera angle, well, this hole barely goes in this hole. This uh, reamer will barely go in this hole, uh, but some of the other holes, it wouldn't go in at all. So, and that could just be that one hole. But what I want to do first, start with the small reamer, put it in the hole. Okay, it almost goes all the way, as you can see here. And I just want to ream a little bit. just to widen the opening of the hole where the large room reamer is gonna go in. So this reamer is really a peg reamer for a steel string guitar. This will ream the pegs, the, uh, this will ream the uh, string peg holes in a steel string. It's a different uh, taper. 
All right, so I did that just to get that started. Now I'm gonna put the, the real McCoy in here. Make sure the thing will fit. And in fact, it's in the hole, I can feel it. So I think, let me check and see how much time I'm on here. All right, so this is gonna be a long video. We're at 10 minutes already. But what I wanna demonstrate is how softly I ream this hole. I'm not pushing hard. I'm letting this extremely sharp reamer uh, start to do its work. Now, I'm gonna be reaming until the block and the tape meet, the bottom of the tape and the block. And that's my mark. Um, and it allows the peg to just about protrude through the face side, the opposite side of the head that I'm reaming into. And you can see I'm not reaming hard, all right? It's a very gentle process. And I'm feeling at the bottom for the tip of the reamer to come through down here. I am getting, uh, you know, dust and chips here. And I'm just about starting to feel. I'm also checking my hole, make sure I'm, I'm centering my twist on this half inch hole, you know. I'm not off to one side or the other, I'm watching it quite carefully. Once I get all the way through and I establish this one to 30 taper, now I'm starting to feel the tip coming through. Once I establish that one to 30 taper, it in fact does get easier, okay? And what I'm doing here, I'm gonna back out just for a sec. And I'm going to, um, let me see if I can just take a visual on this. I'm gonna pick up this neck and do a little bit of reaming with the small reamer from the other side. I'm gonna just hold this for a moment. This might go out of camera, so forgive me if it does. I just wanna make sure, I'll do this with my left hand. I wanna make sure that I don't chip the rosewood. So I'm basically just opening this up a tiny bit. That's enough. Okay. So that when the big reamer sticks through, let me check the camera. Yeah, something like that. Let's see here. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so I don't want the end of the reamer here. This thing is very sharp. I don't want it to um, chip the outer part of the hole as I'm going through. And that's why I turned it around and did a slight ream. And I have to get it into that hole. Come on now, there it goes. All right. Now I can feel the tip coming through. The tip is through about a 32nd of an inch. Ooh, don't put my finger there anymore. So I know the reamer has gone through. And uh, what I'm trying to do now is just stay centered on this hole. The reamer is doing the cutting. It's extremely sharp. It doesn't need my muscle to, uh, to work. It's essentially just, all I have to do is turn it. I'm pushing very gently. And I know this, this tape is my mark because uh, I've practiced and I've already done three holes. This is hole number four on the treble side. This would be the B string. I could have chosen a lower camera angle and you would see this thing protruding right now. I'll show you that in a minute. 
and I'm checking to make sure I'm staying centered on this um, this little uh, jig that I made, this 90 degree jig, which is really keeping my reamer aligned and it's it works beautiful. And I suggested if anybody out there watching this video, if anybody's got some peg reaming to do, I strongly suggest using a jig to keep your um, reamer straight. I did a little practice board here before I, um, I wanted to see how it would work. So I, I took a, just a piece of pine and did a little, some practice holes. And I found out that probably the, the best hole that I made stuck out, the reamer would stick out one and five sixteenths of an inch. And I noted here better. But I also noted that when I did it by hand without the little jig, every single peg was slightly crooked. So you can't keep these, and I tried keeping it straight, just doing it, you know, without uh, a guide. That's what I would call this. This is a guide. And it's it's not touching the reamer. The reamer is traveling freely. It's a half inch hole, there are two of them. And that just, one, for one side and the other side, makes it easier. And the reamer is well through now. It's through probably almost three quarters of an inch. And you can see I'm just doing it very gently because I don't want to be the guy that screws up this guitar. Especially for the owner who is a great guitarist, doctor of music, Silvio Chulay, Chulay. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but we're new friends and I don't want to uh, get on his bad side. Okay, so now I'm sticking through eh, seven eighths of an inch. Uh, so my initial, the amount that I want this reamer to stick through initially is one and one eighth inches. I know my mark is going to be one and five sixteenths, but I'm gonna do the fine stuff after I do the initial stuff. Right now, just trying to get everything so that the pegs will go in the holes. Okay, I'm almost there. You can see my blue tape is getting close and the reamer is nice and square. I haven't even touched the holes with the reamer. They're just, the reamer's just traveling inside. Sounds like a bird chirping. You can see there's a pile of dust down here. I'm almost there. And I already know that I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put this tape just inside the hole. Check the depth. That's just about right, right there. Now I'm just going to back off the reamer and pull it out. And uh, I'm going to hit this dust. <laughs> Remove the uh, Jorgensen clamp. Oops. And now I've got four holes all reamed. I'm gonna put a peg in just to show you. And it's, um, it's just 
I'm, I'm, it's just starting to protrude at this point. We'll put four pegs in here because I have four holes. These go, these fit with a friction fit. They are not threaded. Okay. So yeah, they are straight and square. Beautiful. Okay. And right now you can see they're just about to protrude through. So I have more to go. Uh, and I'll do that after I get all six to this point. Okay. And we're going to end this video. Uh, this would be part one. Yeah, 20 minutes long. I'm sorry for the length on it, but uh, it's involved stuff. And I wanted to uh, explain it that uh, you want to be square and you want to be gentle with these things. Okay. Because eventually when I do put these through to the right depth, I only get one shot at it. So I have to be very slow and methodical. Okay, Bob Desmond checking out, end of part one, Vintner tuning machines being installed in a 1970s uh, Jose Ramirez 1A flamenco.